a missed high five, a king's runs, and a burger that's music to your ears? All of that and much more as another edition of Titans All Access starts now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derrick Henry. Got Chris Moore. Can he catch it? What a catch! Will Levis! What a big time throw! Yeah. Big Jeff! Fires up another set of Adi Hooker. There's Hopkins making the catch. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and another edition of Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith with my Titans radio broadcast partner, Dave McGinnis. Titans headed to Houston to play the Texans for the second time in two weeks. Coach Mack, how does that affect preparation? Well, you know the people. You know the, you know the people. You know the personnel. Now, they're going to have some different personnel than when we played them the first time. These sandwich games, especially sandwich division games, are always very, very interesting because you know these personnel very well. After having just played them, you know them, you know them even better. And so the things that you didn't do well, you try to emphasize how to get over the top of your opponent on that. The things they did well against you, how do you keep them from doing it this time? The Titans did not run the football well in the first matchup against the Texans, but last week against Seattle, 31 overall rushes for 162 yards. What did the Titans do better? Well, they were getting movement off the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's where run game starts. You know, even with the great running backs in the league, they have to have help to get to that second and third step. We had that consistently, especially, Mike, in the first three quarters of the last game. All right, let's take a look at a couple of Derrick Henry's best runs yeah. as we go beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft. Here we go. Yeah, this first one here, this is this is reduced splits. They bring the motion in by the receiver. This is three by one. This is a this is a true eight-man front. This is really a nine-man front. Because if you'll watch, if you'll if you'll watch this person right here, he's gonna be involved in the run front too. Here's the here's the only guy, these two guys right here really have no bearing on this on this run, because this is getting ready to be an outside zone with some combo blocks over here to this side. This is an outside zone. It's gonna start here and it's gonna break here, but the combo blocks are gonna come in here. But this is a this is a massive, I always like doing this, Mike. This right here is a massive defensive wall. So what they've done is, is they're saying you're not going to run the ball into this defense. Let's see what happens here. As we get started, the, the, the thing that happens, first of all, you get a nice push. You get a nice push. You see where Derek comes up to the and shoulders that, that scrum? And we'll see it right here as, as we get to the end zone. We feel stop it, Mike, right there, just about the time he hits the scrum. Here's what I'm talking about the scrum is right here. This is the scrum. This is gonna be the scrum right in here. Now just stop it right there. This is pretty, this is pretty bunched up right here. Now, what you're looking for is initial push to get Derrick Henry, you always hear me say in the broadcast booth, to a second or third step. Now they got him to his third step. Watch him use a shoulder to bunch through the scrum, and then he bursts forward. This is really an excellent, excellent run against a loaded front. Good blocking by Chris Moore there. Traylon Burks getting out there and helping. Derrick Henry for 12 yards on that play. Next play as we go to the second half, we're going to take a look at a completely different play. This is a completely different play. This is an I formation. This is an I formation with a tight end. Now what we're going to do with this tight end, we're going to bring this tight end across here in motion. And when the tight end comes in motion, what they're going to do, they're going to change their, they're going to change their shades on the defensive line. They're going to shift their defensive front this way. And then we're going to run a, what's called a split dive. And a split dive is to work against the eye control of the linebacker. So the split dive is going to look like this is going to here and here you split off of the eye formation but out of this then it's all up to the running backs vision this is a vision run by the running back let's take a look at it mike and coach back a lot of times you think oh the guy lined up at fullback has gone wrong but that's what he's supposed to do split dive all you're, right you're, you're working on you're working on the army eye control of the linebackers behind the line of scrimmage once they start once they start in this split dive Take, stop it right there. All right, you can start, you see, see what happens with that split dive. It took the linebacker clear out here to the backside, but that's why I say it's a vision run for the running back because now what he's got to do, everything's balled up here, but he has to have vision to see this cutback lane, and Derrick Henry does a great job of this, and we'll see it from the end zone also when, when we run. Gain of nine. Gain of nine yards, but watch, watch the split dive, and you'll, you'll, when the, when it, as soon as they start to split, stop it. See what the split does? The split right here holds. 
Bobby Wagner. One of the best linebackers in the league. Now, all of this is bunched up right here. But Derrick Henry is looking now for the key block. He's looking for my cutback hole because he knows the split dive has taken this man out of the front. So watch, watch Derrick Henry. Watch what his eyes just just take a look. Take a look at his eyes right here and watch him when he cuts back. There it is, right there. He, he cut a he cut a three hole skip back there to the backside for nine yards. Very well designed. But this is Derrick Henry. Great vision and a, and a great jump. This is a jump cut. And a jump cut for a big, tall back is really something special. Good stuff. Coach, I know you love to watch Derrick Henry run almost as much as you love going to Bonnaroo. I love Bonnaroo. I'd like to go to Bonnaroo twice a year if they have it. I mean, any chance I get to go to Bonnaroo, I'd love it. Well, it's great every summer. They only have it once a year. Okay, that's disappointing. But 365 days a year virtually, you can get a Bonnaroo burger at Jiffy Burger in Manchester. Wait a minute, now, how did I miss this trip? Well, you, okay. were, you were busy doing you Coach Mack things. You go ahead with your story. All right, so we took Brett Kern because he had just retired and he didn't have anything to do. On the way down there, he told us a great story about a famous sideline encounter that he didn't have with Jeffrey Simmons. NFL Films made it famous. He'll tell us the backstory in our Listen Up with Duncan <laughs> segment coming up next on Titans All Access. Ball officially at the 13, first and 10, Titans in the pistol. Three tight ends for the Titans, all to the right. They roll Henry, he's going to throw it, man is wide open. Duncan! Touchdown! Titans, Chig Akakwo on the halfback pass. Derrick Henry, who throws it well, makes the play. Henry now 8 of 10 passing in his career for 41 yards at five touchdowns. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. Our Follow Me Through Tennessee series has given me the chance to have great conversations with all my guests en route to the various restaurants across the state that we've visited. For our last installment of the series, which we'll share later on this edition of Titans All Access, I invited former Titans punter Brett Kern to join me as we went to Jiffy Burger in Manchester. During the nearly 90 minute drive, I had to get his take on a moment that still makes me laugh to this day. It was following the Titans win in week 17 over the Miami Dolphins in 2021. To say Jeffrey Simmons left Brett Kern hanging is an understatement. Learn what really happened in this week's Listen Up with Duncan. Hey, I want to ask you, I was thinking about Amy Adams Strong and Jeffrey Simmons getting that deal done past offseason. I, I never doubted that deal was going to get done, but he did leave you hanging on the sidelines. You were, yeah. you were waiting to give him a high five. high five. When did that happen? What was that? It was pretty funny. <laughs> I get that. Um, <laughs> a lot. I don't even know. I'm trying to remember the game, honestly. But it was at a point where our defense was playing so well. And I remember talking to guys like, hey, I got a KB interception here. And I remember being like, no, I think I think Big Jeff's getting sacked, right? Because you talk like that on the sidelines. Like, sure. You know, you try to pretend like you can, you know, call the play or what's going to happen next. And, and I think Big Jeff got a sack. So when he came off, everybody was celebrating, you know, hey, Big Jeff. You know, once again, doing your thing. And I just remember being all excited. And I thought we made eye contact. <laughs> Clearly we didn't. And I just put my hand up, like, give me high, and he just walked by me. And I just, just I, I just get my hand out there. The dub came over and he was laughing hysterically because he saw the whole thing happen. To Zubar. Zubar, yeah. Zubar, and he, and he came over and gave me the high five. And, and I had no idea that he was Mike either. I had no idea. And I went over to him and said what I said, like, dude, you, you better not leave me hanging again or else we have a serious problem. Because, I mean, in all reality, me against Big Jeff, like, what am I going to be able to do to Jeff? Right. Right. It's not like you're going to pay him back in some evil in way. In some evil way, yeah. right? I mean, I mean, the worst thing you can do is you take, you take the you take the spark plug out of his car or something like that, right? Or, or fill his car with peanuts or, I, you know. And so that's what I said to him. And then I, I don't know when it was, but the video came out. Was it after the game? Yes. So, and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, the dude was mic'd up. This is, it's 
they got this all on film. Boy, yes, sir. The next time you walk by me without giving me a high five, we're gonna have some problems. Pop all, Brett. You can listen to my entire conversation with Brett Kern on the latest edition of the official Titans podcast, known as the OTP. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. When Titans All Access continues, Amy Wells sits down with a Titans defensive back who has made a big jump from year one to year two. In last weekend's game at Nissan Stadium, the Titans made the decision to feature second-year tight end Chick Conquo, and it worked out very well. Conquo tied his career high with six catches, which went for 63 yards, and his first touchdown of the season. Conquo has 21 catches in the last five games. Featuring Chick Conquo is the decision of the week, presented by Hughes and Coleman. Welcome back to Titans All Access. As a second round pick in 2022, cornerback Roger McCrary was the first Titans rookie to start in every single game since 2017. So going into his sophomore campaign, he spent some time recovering before reflecting on what he might need to do to take his career to the next level. His conversation with our Amy Wells is this week's Nissan Insider. Mayfield under heat again, going deep downfield and the pass is intercepted by McCrary. Going to bring it out of the end zone, looking for a block to the 5, to the 10, to the 15, and the first of the season for Roger McCrary, the takeaway on the Titan side of the field. So as an observer, someone who watched you throughout the entire season never noticed any sort of drop off, pain, anything like that. Obviously, I'm sure that you were hurting a little bit. Never notice any difference in your play, though. How did you mentally get through that? I say how I mentally got through it. It was really just like talking to the vets, just asking them like, "What do y'all do when your body gets tired?" Um, like, I know you was feeling this way. I talked to Hook. I'm like, I know you was feeling like this before, bro. Like, tell me what you did. And he was just telling me like stuff that he did, just ease, just um, just work on your body. So it was just great because I feel like times they brought the vets were like working on your body and they brought in professional guys to work on me mentally. So I feel like it was great. What specifically have you been looking at when it comes to working on your body and making sure you're ready to go for another season? Um, first, I had to start off with my diet, me eating more healthy. That was one thing. I had to lay out some food. I know that, that just wasn't good for me because I can tell like, like I'm not running good. I'm not feeling right. I'm not feeling good. So I, I kind of tell the difference in that and more like like being scratched, more flexible and stuff like that to work with my body, hammer screens, you know. It was just seeing that, like how the game go, the business, everybody. That was another thing I paid attention to the most was just working on my body, just getting my body ready for the next season. You're talking about your diet. What are some of the things you had to stop eating? Baked beans. Oh no, you yeah. gave them up. Yeah, that was Sally. Sally, but um, my, I mean, baked beans one, but like fried food, you know, I'm from the South, like we, we, we love eating our fried food and everything. It's just stuff like that and like more greens and stuff. I'm not good at cooking that much really, so I gotta find a private chef, stuff like that. And I use some of the guy resources who have them type of own chefs and everything. So that was just great to have them guys in my back corner to ask for advice. Now that you've cut out the fried food, you've cut out your beloved baked beans, are you, feel, are you noticing a difference? Well, Steph, I'm noticing a big difference. It just feels great just waking up early. You know, I'm not feeling a little lazy, a little slouch or nothing. It, it's a big difference. And I try to tell like some of the rookie guys there now, just like focus on your body because that's the main thing. Because if you not focus on your body and you hurt, you can't get on the field. So I feel like that's your job. Your body's your job. You got to work on that. Watson looking to go deep. Get sacked! A prairie blitzing in to get him. Where do you think you're noticing a difference in year two in terms of things you're more comfortable with or more confident in? Uh, I would say just me, just, just knowing the game, knowing what's going at me, um, knowing how everything's going to come at me now, it, it may feel more confident, maybe be more of a vocal leader because I'm like a quiet guy, I don't really say that much. So I'm kind of like understanding how everything goes, how the system works, like what's coming at me and what's to prevent and stuff like that. So paying attention to everything, I'm observing everything. So I feel great. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
Do you feel like you're able to pick up more off the field as well as on the field in terms of being a leader? Most definitely. I, I say I pick up more off the field than on the field. I feel like the more off the field stuff is way important than stuff on the field because that stuff you do every day on the field, like we do that our whole life. So I feel like a lot of people should pay attention more off the field because that's what makes you like a leader, like more character, stuff like that. Some that can build you better as a person. Let's work, let's work. We can get a turnover hook. That one top back! I told you, turn over! Is it true that you're looking to start a foundation around the Nashville area? Yes, I'm trying to start some, it's just, I just gotta work my way up, just start slow and build up to it, cause I don't like to rush anything, I just, to let everything fall in place and just leave in God's hand. When Titans All Access continues, Brett Kern and I arrive in Manchester, ready to take on the Bonnaroo Burger at Jiffy Burger. Follow me through Tennessee is next. This is Stadium in 60. A quick update on the Titans' new stadium. Buy a PSL at Nissan Stadium now. Get credit towards a PSL in the new Titans Stadium. Titans Vice President of Ticket Sales, Jim Rice, explains. Anybody that has a PSL, you're going to get uh, full value of whatever you paid for at the time. Uh, and then anybody that's buying now until we go on sale with the new building, all that money will transfer over towards uh, a, a PSL in the new building as well. Yeah, so if you paid three grand for your PSL, you're going to get $3,000 in credit for the new stadium. Plus, being a PSL holder, um, you're going to be towards the top of the list when, when we go on sale. So you're going to have first crack at the best seats in the house. For the latest news, visit titansnewstadium.com. Manchester, Tennessee. This is Jiffy Burger. Legendary spot that you have to hit. My first time, Brett Kern's first time. They have the Bonnaroo Burger. Here we go. Right off the highway. Let's roll. Let's go. Come on. I'm Mike. Dr. Penny. And David, nice to see you. Thank you. All right, he's working. I'm going to get out of here so you yeah, can see Brett Kern okay, work. Keep him on a certain way. Yeah, he's doing a good job. That's for, we got a call in order for two hamburgers. Is that Mike? Right? No, yours is there. You're ready to go. You want a burger? Oh, no, I just got that one breakfast. You want a Budweiser? Yeah. <laughs> I want to know how you got Brett Kern in the kitchen to work. He walks in it the door, so and David Penning grabs him. Me. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't really an ask. He didn't ask. He told me. How did it become Jiffy Burger? In 63, it sold at auction, and so the people bought it. And they uh, had a contest at the newspaper. And so this lady come up with the name Jiffy Burger, and they, I don't know what they gave her as a prize, but she wants some kind of a prize. And of course, she's been raised in it, my son Brian's been raised in it. The whole family's always been in the restaurant business. Originally, it was my mom and dad, and then we bought the whole thing, and then after that, we just kept growing and growing. Nancy, are you allowed to talk? Mm -hmm. Or can you just not get a word it's, in edgewise? It's hard to, it's oh, hard to, but these two. I just stand here and be quiet. But we all know that she's the boss. So. <laughs> This is the Bonnaroo burger. This is, this well, is the same water, one. Man, on I didn't get cheese. You didn't get cheese? There's a really good chance that I flipped that, that hamburger. Okay, so it's got an egg. Onion ring. Onion ring. Bacon, mayo. Bacon, mayo, cheese. Mm -hmm. And you get a free angioplasty with it, right? Yeah, that's an unbelievable service. How did the Bonnaroo burgers come to be? Give us the backstory. Okay, so that was Jeff Quayar. So Jeff Quayar was one of the vice presidents of Bonner. And of course, we met him in 2002. So, movie. so we in had this relationship with Bonner from the very beginning. He was talking about a burger one day. He said, "I'm, I'm going to come up with a Bonner burger." I think Nancy and Tracy had talked to him. He's got a like a metal pole barn. Building, it's 5,000 square foot, but I told the pickers we got 5,000 square foot, but we got 20,000 square foot of stuff in a 5,000. He's got just on the front of the building. There's 150 signs. How many gas? He's got every gas pump. Uh, we got 65 gas. Oh. So one of my favorite things is the old Coke refrigerator. He's got like the old, like old Coke got, refrigerator, 50, freezer. I counted them the other day. We 50? got 50 something Coke machines. So David Pennington has a lot of 
great memorabilia, but we're going to add something cool, a Game Warden Titans helmet to his collection to let him know that Jiffy Burger in Manchester is Brett Kern and Tennessee Titans approved. It's time now for my three keys presented by SeatGeek. Key number one, block them. Block them. Didn't happen that much in the game against Houston on December 17th, especially when the Titans were trying to run the football. You got to have a better game against their defensive front. It's as simple as that. Key number two, get 22 to 20 plus. The Titans are a better football team the more Derrick Henry runs. And coming off of a game where he ran well in 19 carries against Seattle, they need to get him 20 plus carries. He should be especially motivated after rushing for just nine yards in the game against Houston two weeks ago. And finally, knock them loose. The Titans have forced only 12 turnovers this year. The defense needs to help the offense by taking the ball away, maybe like they did against Houston a couple weeks ago, taking the ball away and getting in the end zone. Time for a barrage of takeaways, and Sunday at NRG Stadium would be perfect. Remind you to tune in this weekend as the Titans take on the Texans. Kickoff set for noon central time. Titans Countdown gets you ready on Titans Radio at 11 a.m. central. We hope you'll join us. That'll do it for this week's edition of Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith. We'll see you next time.